Can you think of some important prophecies from the Old Testament? Perhaps you thought of the young woman in Isaiah 7, or the messianic figure in Isaiah 53, or even the serpent in Genesis 3. Many of us, however, are drawn to the prophecies in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel purports to predict the coming of the kingdoms of Media, Persia, and Greece, as it was supposedly composed in or around the 6th century BCE. However, in this video, we will demonstrate that historical inaccuracies and linguistic evidence from the book itself seem to strongly indicate that it was not written during this early period, but after the events that it prophesied in the middle of the 2nd century BCE. Like, subscribe, come along for the ride. Of the many prophetic writings in the Old Testament, the book of Daniel is one of the most debated. Daniel, the main figure in the book, is depicted as having received dreams and visions in the late 7th and early 6th centuries. Dreams and visions that predict the future, sometimes in great detail. Debate has generally focused on the dating of the book and the authenticity of these prophecies. Was the book written in the 6th or 5th century? long before the events predicted came to pass? Or was it written in the second century, after or during the events described? I will attempt to survey the available evidence, which strongly suggests that the prophetic portions of the book were composed during the second century BCE. Before we begin, we should talk a little about the book itself. In Daniel 1.1 we read, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. While there are historical problems even with this initial verse of the book, the setting is around 605 BCE, when the Babylonians had recently defeated the Neo-Assyrian Empire that had dominated the ancient Near East for the previous several centuries. The events depicted in the book take place from approximately 605 to the middle of the 6th century. The book of Daniel is divided into two roughly equal parts. In chapters 1 through 6, we find individual tales concerning Daniel and his three friends as they struggle to maintain their loyalty to their God in their land of captivity. Chapters 7 through 12 contain several visions and revelations concerning future events in the ancient Near East. These prophecies reveal that the Babylonians, Medes, Persians, and Greeks would successively rule the region, sometimes providing great detail. For example, in chapter 7, developing a prophecy from chapter 2, Daniel sees four great beasts, a lion, the Babylonians, a bear, the Medes, a leopard, the Persians, and a fourth terrifying beast, the Greeks. A similar vision appears in chapter 8, with a two-horned ram representing the Medes and the Persians, and a he-goat, Greece under Alexander, that kills the ram. Chapter 9 breaks the pattern of beastly metaphor, but describes the time frame in which these events would take place. Finally, chapters 10 through 12 present the most detailed prophecy, describing events following Alexander's death through the reign of Antiochus IV. There are some who would argue that the fourth kingdom in Daniel chapter 2 should be identified with Rome rather than with Greece. This interpretation is problematic for several reasons. Without going into a great amount of detail, there are several things that we know concerning the rulers and the kingdoms represented in the book. First, at a minimum, in the visions in chapters 8 and 10 through 12, the final kingdom described is clearly Greece. Second, Darius the Mede rules in between Belshazzar of Babylonia and Cyrus of Persia. Finally, in ancient historiography, the Medes rule, followed by the Persians, and there was a four-kingdom trope that appeared in several texts. Assyria, Media, Persia, and Greece. Rome was considered to be the fifth kingdom in later texts. In short, the four-kingdom motif found in ancient historiography 
is also found in Daniel, which divides the rule of Media and Persia and begins with Babylonia. Because the other visions end, at times in great detail, with the rule of Greece, there is no compelling reason to see Rome in chapter 2. We must now turn to the date of the book itself. If we take the book at face value, at least from our modern perspective, it would appear that Daniel received these visions and revelations during the 7th and 6th centuries. This, of course, would imply that the prophecies were given to Daniel from a supernatural source, centuries before events took place in the 2nd century. A more critical approach to the text argues for a late date for the book of Daniel, most likely during the 2nd century BCE. This position does not require supernatural revelation or intervention, and regards the prophecies to have been written during or after the described events. If one simply determines the date of the book based on their belief in the supernatural, the reality of the God of the Bible, or the existence of divine prophecy, then the task becomes far less complicated. However, there is no need to resort to this simplistic approach to the text, as there are a variety of indications that the text was composed later rather than earlier. I will focus on two significant indicators of a late date of composition, historical inaccuracies and the late style of the Hebrew and Aramaic language in which the book was written. It is not a new discovery that the book of Daniel contains historical details that are incorrect, including inaccurate dates for events, shifting of sequences of kings, and the improper identification, or even existence, of these rulers. In his monumental commentary on the book of Daniel, John Collins focuses on two primary historical issues that appear in the text. Belshazzar the king in chapter 5, and the ruler known as Darius the Mede. Let's begin with Belshazzar. In Daniel 5.1 we read, Belshazzar the king had a great feast for a thousand of his nobles, and he was drinking wine in the presence of one thousand. Without going into great detail here, there are certain things that we know about Belshazzar, who was placed over Babylonia during the reign of his father Nabonidus, who may have gone a little crazy. Now, we could talk about how Belshazzar was not technically the king during this period, but there are bigger issues. First, Belshazzar was not the son of Nebuchadnezzar, chapter 5, verse 11 and 18, but of the usurper Nabonidus, who reigned from 556 to 539 BCE. Some have attempted to rationalize this by suggesting that Belshazzar was married to a daughter of Nebuchadnezzar, but there is, of course, nothing to suggest that this was the case. The other significant problem was the description of Belshazzar in his death and the fall of the Neo-Babylonian Empire. In Daniel 5, 30-31, in the same night that Daniel interpreted the writing on the wall, Belshazzar was killed and Darius the Mede received the kingdom. We know, however, that Nabonidus returned to Babylonia to actively rule before it was conquered by Cyrus in 539 BCE. This leads us to our second historical issue, the existence of Darius the Mede, who is said to have conquered the Neo-Babylonian Empire. First, there is no historical record for any king Darius the Mede. Second, we know that it was Cyrus of Persia who took Babylonia in 539 BCE. Furthermore, the king Darius I, 522 486 BCE, a Persian ruler, was known for his division of the kingdom into satrapies, as was attributed to Darius the Mede in Daniel 6.1. In short, it would appear that the writer of this section of Daniel was unaware of the specific historical details of this historical period. This would be striking if the book had been written during this period, particularly if Daniel is the author, given he would have lived and ministered during these reigns. Hartman and Delella aptly note, quote, it would appear astounding and incredible that he, Daniel, did not know, or at least present, the true order of the Babylonian monarchs and their successors. Instead, these inaccuracies appear to be consistent with a later date of composition, long enough after these dates that they would be imperfectly remembered. If this were truly a divinely inspired prophecy, then would such mistakes have been made? 
Not only are there historical inaccuracies that suggest that the book was composed at a late date, but the date of the language itself, the Hebrew and Aramaic, suggests a late date of composition. Let's consider a copy of a hypothetical document that contains a prophecy supposedly written by William Shakespeare in the 17th century, which predicts events that would occur in America until 2016. How might we determine when the original document was written? Among other things, we could evaluate the style of English in which the text was written. If it were composed by Shakespeare in the 17th century, we would expect the English to contain words and phrases that were common to the writings of the time. However, if we were to read the sentence, And thus saith he, What's up? We might wonder why such a modern phrase appears in the text. Or if we saw, Sit down a while, and let us pick thy brain concerning the matter. The phrase, pick thy brain, might stand out as odd to us. Both of these examples might lead us to suspect that the writer was attempting to make the text appear to be more ancient than it actually was, but some modern vernacular worked its way into the document. Similarly, when we approach a book like Daniel, we want to evaluate the language itself to see if it is more consistent with one period of the language or another. As it was written in both Hebrew and Aramaic, we can evaluate both languages independently. Again, without going into detailed analysis of the features of the languages, scholars in the field generally agree that the Aramaic, chapters 2 to 7 roughly, should be dated to a period between the beginning of the 4th century and the end of the 3rd century. For example, Collins writes, the balance of probability, then, favors a date in the early Hellenistic period for the Aramaic portions of Daniel, although a precise dating on linguistic grounds is not possible. Seau concurs. Typologically more advanced than the Aramaic of the 6th and 5th centuries, and possibly even the Aramaic of the Samaria papyri from the first half of the 4th century, but the Aramaic is more conservative than the dialects dating from 200 BCE onward. The Hebrew portions of the book show features that are more consistent with later Hebrew, including Aramaisms, late verbal, grammatical, and syntactical forms, as well as vocabulary and idioms. Collins summarizes, The Hebrew of Daniel has little in common with the exilic period, most of the 6th century. Rather, it falls into the range of Second Temple Hebrew, approximately 516 BCE forward, as exemplified by Chronicles, approximately the 4th century, and the Dead Sea Scrolls, 2nd century. Thus, the Aramaic sections were likely composed between 400 and 200 BCE, with the Hebrew sections written between 400 and the middle of the 2nd century. When we consider this evidence, it would appear that the majority of the individual tales in Aramaic about Daniel and his three friends were likely composed earlier than the Hebrew sections of the book. To sum up, the historical inaccuracies concerning the period that Daniel would have had intimate knowledge of, coupled with the late range of dates of composition indicated by the language of the book itself, strongly suggest the late date of composition, much later than the late 7th or 6th centuries. With this general range of late dates in mind, we must evaluate one final piece of evidence from the book the specificity and accuracy of the historical data throughout the prophesied periods. Going back to our Shakespeare example above, if the prophecy about the history of America spoke generally about the Civil War, followed in time by the Revolutionary War, World War I and World War II, we would wonder why the author got the Civil War and Revolutionary Wars in the wrong chronological order. However, the prophecy then spoke at length of two candidates, one who sought the presidency as her husband had before her, who was opposed by a man who polarized the nation. This man, with no political background, rose to prominence against all expectations, to the chagrin of many. Finally, the prophecy ended with an admonition to the American people to remain faithful, as this man would not be allowed to gain the presidency, as God would return and deliver the nation from such a man. We could posit a number of things with relative certainty from this information. First, the tremendous detail that is accurately represented concerning the presidential race between Senator Clinton and Mr. Trump 
contrasted with the general and sometimes incorrect information presented concerning early American history, would lead the reader to believe the writer actually lived through the events described in 2016. Furthermore, we would likely conclude that the prophecy was written before the election, as the prophecy reassures the people that Mr. Trump would not become president. Thus, we could safely date this portion of the text, at least, to around the middle of 2016. This situation is similar to what is found in the book of Daniel. Again, without going into great detail, the historical information concerning the Neo-Babylonian and Persian periods is often confused, out of order, or simply inaccurate. However, prophecies concerning events during the second century, particularly in chapter 11, are much more detailed and refer to certain portions of the reign of Antiochus IV Epiphanes. This has led scholars to conclude that the book was composed relatively late, and certain sections can be dated with some precision, based on the specific events described in the text. In fact, Seau compares the book of Daniel to Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, which was set in the early Roman period. Quote, in contrast to the discrepancies in details from the period of the historical setting in the 6th and 5th centuries, the book is remarkably precise in its allusions to certain events in the Ptolemaic and Seleucid periods, down to the time just before the death of Antiochus IV Epiphanes, at the end of 164 BCE. Therefore, scholars are generally agreed concerning the editorial history and development of the book of Daniel. The individual Aramaic tales found in chapters 2 through 6 likely existed as separate stories and were brought together during the Hellenistic period. Chapter 7, which acts as a bridge between the individual tales and the visions of chapters 8 through 12, was composed in Aramaic during the early reign of Antiochus IV, during the initial phase of persecution. Chapters 8 through 12 were added at various points between 167 through 164 BCE. And finally, chapter 1 was translated into Hebrew. In conclusion, although the book of Daniel is considered by some to contain genuine prophecy concerning the late 1st millennium BCE, composed in the 7th and 6th centuries, we have seen that there is abundant evidence that demonstrates to a high degree of certainty that these prophecies were composed during or after the events described.